Hello everyone and welcome to a special Six Nations preview episode of Rugby 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 podcast podcast podcast. The show where we discuss in painful detail who is going to play in the centre for England for 20 seconds and then bring you Ricky Flutie fan fiction for a further five minutes. I'm Oscar and joining me as always are Hutch. Hello. And Jonathan. Hello. How are we doing this week lads? Shut up. All right then, let's get cracking with the show. So as we all know, we're on the eve of the start of the 2022 Six Nations, but as ever, due to the fact that we chat utter shite, let's keep this brief. Uh, So what I'd like for us to go through uh, is the teams and sum up what we can expect from them this championship by comparing them to a holiday. So for an example, I've written down that England would be Christmas, because they generally always deliver with the occasional stinky one. So would you agree? Uh, I think that's a pretty good shout. Yeah, that's probably about right. I would have to say Italy would be New Year's Eve, though. Hyped up to deliver year on year, despite how awful last year was, but always remains a disappointment. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, a good, that's a good shout. Yeah. What about Scotland? Oscar, what, what would you say Scotland would be? Easter, because who fucking cares? Like, can, you tell me what, can you tell me what day Easter is this year? No, you can't. Um, Probably on a Sunday. It's no. got some, like, some highlights, you know, some, some, some good food. Like Finn Russell would be the the lint gold bunny, good good chocolate. But yeah. all in all, who really cares? Bit of a non-event. And it makes yeah. makes you want to throw up as well at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Too much of a good thing. Uh, Wales, uh, birthdays. Why? Either a complete non-event, nothing happens, or it's the best day of the year. Yeah. <laughs> True. Okay, what do you make of France then? Yeah, I, I thought for France, Halloween, because yeah. we never really celebrated it. It was never really a thing. So in France, I'm thinking like in the last 10 years, never haven't really been a thing. But now they're starting to be taken seriously. So Halloween, yeah. Sit back and look at the pretty people. <laughs> and then for Ireland, I just honestly, I struggled. So I, I just started thinking what only happens between World Cup cycles and we <laughs> landed on the Winter Olympics. Oh yeah, the well-known public holiday. What about Guy Fawkes night? It's not. Yeah, but that happens every year, Kieran. It happens in World Cup years, whereas Ireland are a non-event in World Cup years. The Winter Olympics aren't a holiday, but I reckon it's like a festival of sport. Peaks about 18 months before the Rugby World Cup. Exactly. Uh, Oh, I did have some any other business in the notes for this. Um, There was notes. (laughs) Sergio Parise has tried for probably the 50th time in the past three years to have his farewell test. He's (laughs) He's not in the squad. But they're still talking about him like he could play, like he's in some of the promotional material. Is he? And God. it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, he's on the poster <laughs> for like the Italian launch. He tell you who he's like he's like the like at, at an amateur club. He's the really talented student who never pays any subs. He never goes to training or never like comes for beers with the boys. He's always just off at Loughborough or something. But then on his reading week, he gets parachuted in and be like, no training. Whoever's been there at training every single day of the week, fuck off to the twos, mate. Sergio Advertising Italy's campaign with Sergio Parise is like advertising for the new MacBook Air with Stephen Hawking. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, that'll do it for the Six Nations preview. We move on now to the much requested return of the legendary segment. Stephen Moans. Our Stephen Moans this week goes to the announcement and the impending release of Rugby 2022, rugby's latest venture into the gaming world. Are you boys excited for this? No. 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 No, I'm not. It looks fucking terrible. We've, ri- we've written down in the notes, Oscar, what was it Xbox, Mag- Xbox Magazine said about it? What did they say? Uh, the worst sports game we have ever played. We're not going to be issuing fake news here. That is Rugby 20 but it's by the same developers and they've got even less rights on this game. So, <laughs> From the developers of the worst sports game ever played. <laughs> IGN also gave that uh, infamous game a, uh, a 2 out of 10 and dubbed it an utter disaster. I don't doubt that this game has improved and that it's, it's fun to play kind of a few games of rugby against your friends. I don't doubt that it plays well and it's nice to have all the in-depth tactics and all of that stuff but what can what we were saying what comes from gaming now is the replayability and that is born mm. out of the game's customization options and ed it this the customization on this game is a complete disaster it just doesn't exist 
Stop thinking you're so edgy and alternative and just play FIFA. Because the rugby games aren't there yet. They're not there yet. <laughs> They're not playable. <laughs> <laughs> save yourself save yourself some money. Save yourself some the time. The extension of uh, this Stephen Moans for me is the like the marketing that's come with the rollout. Clearly, the game developers have been like, we need to get in touch with some people on rugby Twitter and tell them to yeah. like talk up this game. But uh, yeah, like, John, like Jonathan was saying, it's like... They're they're measuring it against Jonah Lomu rugby from <laughs> like 1997. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a weird comparison point. This game's got better graphics than Pong. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, it but there's <laughs> knocks the spots of Frogger. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, I'm not having that. Frogger is an absolute goat of gaming. <laughs> rugby 22, almost as good as Frogger. <laughs> I'd buy it, to be honest. Put that on the fucking box. <laughs> Quote we have here from a rugby Twitter celebrity who shall remain nameless, but his name rhymes with Schmall Schmilliams, is Rugby 22 is without doubt now the best rugby game. So it's better than Jonah Lomu Rugby, which came out in 1997, and Rugby 08, which came out in 2007. So in 15 years or 25 years of gaming advances, we've managed to basically get a mobile game masquerading as a 40 pound console game is it is it is it classified as sports simulation have they yeah. managed to have they actually managed to pass it off as that yeah yes that's amazing you can do anything you want in life <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really this is a win for the little guy in a month's time nobody's gonna be talking about this game it's just because we're so starved for for a rugby game well because nobody will be playing it in a month's time because you can't you win the pro 12 once and that's it we do, however, as to end our Stephen Moans on, on a slightly hopeful note. Is it going to go on the Steam discount store? We do have some sources here at uh, R3P3, and we're just going to say watch this space over the next 18 months or so. Ah. And, uh... Yeah, uh, I'll just say, if you're a fan of the game Cricket 19, then I, I'd start I'd start getting your hopes up. You know. Should we move on to rugby is shit? <laughs> yeah, Kieran's favourite segment. <laughs> so while in the, we're in the mood for dogging rugby... It seems appro- that's not the rule, by the way. It seems appropriate <laughs> that next we week. take on <laughs> rugby is shit once again. I can't imagine I need to explain the premise, as I'm sure all four of you avid listeners I will. know the deal. But rugby is shit is, of course, the part of the show where we come up with a rule that we think will improve rugby. So, Kieran, as our resident rule maker, well, what uh, have you got uh, for us? we're trying to tap into younger markets in the game, aren't we? We once Billy Bowman's out there, yeah, God forbid. And the, the new guy comes in. They're going to be looking for new trendy ways for rugby <laughs> games, gaming. So I thought, why not elaborate the popular game Among Us into rugby and have Rugby Among Us, where each game, one player on each team is selected to sabotage their own team. And after every 20 minutes, they have a nice meeting and they, and they vote out one <laughs> member. <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, if the saboteur is still in at the end, uh, what's the prize? I don't know. I don't know any... Because what it just I seems is know. teams just voluntarily. <laughs> it's just for chaos. This isn't going to improve the game. So they've got four attempts. If it's every twenty, they've got four attempts over twenty minutes to get rid of the saboteur. Yeah, true. And I'm assuming true. that it's the saboteur's job to like drop balls, and if he's the yeah. kicker, miss goals, or well, I was hoping we could refine the idea, or like, um, yes, that would be good. Balls over the line, or. Missed tackles and stuff like that. That's what the saboteurs just adds, be doing, adds another, adds another, yeah, adds so another you, layer to the game. They got to try and do it like subtly enough that they're going to stay in. Obviously. Oh yeah, of course. Have you ever played Among Us? Well, no, no, actually, I haven't. What happens to the if kind of three people are kicked out and then the saboteurs got? What happens to people that are kicked out? Because I'm assuming they're just having they shit games. Off? It was pretty much a red card. Oh, right, so they go down to 14 men. Yeah, they're off the pitch. <laughs> so for the last 60 minutes, it's 11 against 11. <laughs> yeah, which, you know, opens the game up. You can hopefully have a lot more open play. I think there should be should be more serious repercussions for if the saboteur is caught and for people that are having such a shit game that their teammates <laughs> think they're the saboteur. Yeah. <laughs> such an L to be like, it's definitely I think him. we should... Ryan Elias would never make it past the first 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should be considering, like, fines and if, kind of, your... If 
you're voted as a saboteur three times in a row and you're not the saboteur, then that's a that's losing your contract worthy, I think. Yeah, season ban. What about, can you imagine, like, if this was a rule, or maybe it was, and we just don't know about it, when Lionel Boxis was playing, it's just, he does something so <laughs> completely mental every 20 minutes. It'd be like, it's definitely Lionel Boxis. Only a saboteur would try and volley a kick on the full in his own dead ball area. <laughs> <laughs> who decides who the saboteur is before the game like no, on Trapped cards, and CBBC it would just be oh is it yeah 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 random randomly can we, selected can okay. I pitch a separate idea that yes. there is so I, I do like this rule but I quite like the idea of if we sort of pinch something from you know Ant and Deck do that prank thing where there's a little thing of them in the corner and they, they've got them on an earpiece and they're oh, going yeah. like oh and we've got an earpiece and now drop them. the ball <laughs> <laughs> pick up the ref pick up the ref oh so they've just got someone in their ear <laughs> they should have just a little earpiece and they're saying like oh no uh, they say oh should I drop the ball next time it comes to me and they say no 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 don't worry Twitter's going mad everybody thinks you're the saboteur just do something good mm, yeah I like that so so the audience knows oh yeah yeah the interactivity of Rugby Among Us would be incredible so it's a bit like Formula E with the crowd yeah. interaction <laughs> little fan boost give your player a boost yeah so basically, you just get a live feed of like what Twitter's saying. So how, I or does Twitter not know? Do you not disclose um, who the saboteur is, and they're just going, out. "Oh, everybody," and everybody's yeah. going, "Oh, everybody thinks it's you. Everybody thinks it's you." So you've then got to like pull a wonder try out of your ass. Yeah. And they go, "Actually, it wasn't you." What about like pay per view? Yeah. If you get like, oh, if you want to know good. who it that's is, good. know who the saboteur is. Yeah. More income for the game. Pay ten pounds now to get to the live feed of like us three and Lionel Boxy. Like, yeah, volley oh, it, yeah. volley it, mate. Oh, that's incredible! Little money making spinner on the side as well. <laughs> We're in a trailer next to the TMO. <laughs> Every when, yeah, when they cut to the TMO, all you can hear is us in the background, kind of slamming the desk. <laughs> yeah, kick out on the phone. Who is that? Is that... <laughs> I think there needs to be certain terms to this. I, I don't think this can be applied to all rugby. I feel like this needs to be a separate code. This is like a sevens tournament. Yeah. It's it's special. Yeah, I'd love an Among Us rugby tournament. Yeah. Or kind of like replace... No, 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 no. Replace the Anglo-Welsh Cup, the Premiership Rugby Cup with this. Yeah. Nobody watches the Premiership Rugby Cup, but yeah. everybody would care about rugby about it. Okay, I'm, pr- I'm pretty much ready to greenlight this idea right now. Thank you. We'll get the contracts drawn up and we'll, we'll get it sent to Big Billy B. Yeah. 100%. All right, excellent. Another great <laughs> another great rule change. Well done. Thank you. Nice one, brother. Following on from the success of last week's episode, deep dive into Ricky Flutie's post-rugby career, we thought we'd put another retired legend under our microscope and have a real route around in their dirty laundry. <laughs> Ooh, sexy. This week's subject, the man, the myth, the legend. Martin Castro Giovanni. Known to his many fans as Castro, a stalwart of the Italian front row during the noughties and early 2010s and a cornerstone of the hugely successful Leicester Tigers side of the same period. Rumour actually has it that the recent investigation into Tigers' historical salary cap breaches were because of his demands for contracts in excess of £5 million a year, including a hearty bonus of £500,000 for every year where he didn't try to trademark the name the Italian Stallion. After retiring from international duty and a brief stint at top 14 powerhouses Toulon in his twilight years, Castro's career came to an unceremonious end after he was forced to put down tools and attend a family emergency in Argentina. Or so was thought. Upon his return to Charles de Gaulle Airport, a company of Murad Bujalal's private army met him at the taxi rank after he was away for 10 days longer than he was granted. Immediately, the guards smelled cheap alcohol and swede, and Castro had to confess to the truth. After feigning a heartbreaking death in the family, he snuck off on a private jet to Vegas to meet famous Swede Zlatan Ibrahimovic, where he proceeded to spend the next two weeks gambling away his Leicester millions, doing lines and shagging nines. Castro's contract was ripped up, and after his expulsion from the rugby community, Castro went and lived in the wilderness for a year. Nobody really knows what he did in this time. He just kind of left. He returned a new man. He started the Castro Rugby Academy, teaching children the core rugby values like lying, breaching contracts, and the importance of getting trademark applications in early enough to be considered. Alongside his crucial community work, he was doing the rounds on the after-dinner circuit, which uncovered his raw talent of public speaking and presenting. A talent scout spotted him one evening and invited him to audition for Italian talent show Two CK Valles. Castro was delighted. This is what my life has led up to. 
he smashed the audition and went on to present the show for four and a half years until its end a few months ago, after an ITV scout attended the final in Milan. The call came from the very top that they had to throw the checkbook at this man. Unbeknownst to him, he had been headhunted to replace Anton Deck on Britain's Got Talent to provide the European flair that many viewers think has been missing since David Hasselhoff and Michael McIntyre left. Castro was flown to London and was faced with an exciting proposition. He would take over sole presenting duties on Britain's Got Talent with a view for him to take over their entire back catalogue of shows within six months, including I'm a Celebrity and the newly rebranded Martin Castro Giovanni Saturday Night Takeaway. The news was announced and received incredibly well in parts of the East Midlands, but before he could start his new job, unfortunately Castro had to take compassionate leave owing to a recent personal tragedy. He'd been out of the country for a few weeks before, unfortunately, some distressing news surfaced. Castro, once bitten but not twice shy, had been caught on camera in Monte Carlo, sucking jelly shot after jelly shot out of David Ginola's belly button and licking sherbet off his nipples. Once again, his lucrative eight-figure contract was torn up and he was immediately dropped from all ITV presenting gigs. After these unfortunate events and their unceremonious sacking of Anton Deck, ITV had no option but to turn to the next logical man in line for the job, fellow Leicester propping legend, Julian White. Rugby, rugby, rugby. Podcast, podcast, podcast. Before we go, we were going to give Bill Beaumont rugby values a miss this week, but things have now changed. Rugby values. I'm sure you'll all be aware of the heartwarming story of little Alfie getting support from the entire rugby world after being abused, belittled and fat shamed by a man on Alfie's father's Facebook. Now, rather than just echoing everybody's words of support, uh, we've managed to actually gain an audience with the man who kicked all of this off. Oh, Alfie's dad. No. Alfie. Mm, no, um, the abusive man from Facebook. Oh, for right. fuck's Look, We are tackling sake. this issue at its root and want to find out more about the driving force behind what fuels abuse from middle-aged men or small children. We are now joined in studio by Phil Matumi. Phil Matumi. Sorry, Phil Matumi. So, Phil, when did you start bullying children on Facebook? I, I, I don't bully. And what did you think of Alfie's dad calling you an idiot? Coming from him, his Twitter has more outdated opinions than this podcast. Do you make a habit of looking at pictures of young children and passing comment on their looks on public forums? Luke, don't make it weird. Uh, And when did you complete your medical degree, enabling you to pass judgement on someone's health? Luke, chump, I don't need to be a doctor to tell you that that kid is unhealthy, right? I speak two languages, English, French and facts. That's free. And I don't need to sit here and have you lecture me about abusing children on Facebook isn't right. This isn't what I signed up for. So go ahead, ask me a normal question. Go on. Yeah, actually, we'll we'll just escort you out there, Get your hands off me. See you, Phil. I made him. I'm the best thing that ever happened to that porker. Bye, Phil. He needs me. (laughs) All right. I'm Shut the, the door in your way. See you later, mate. Yep. Have you seen his dad's old tweets? I'll read okay. a few of them No, out. okay, that won't be... The... Okay, bye, Phil. Bye. Okay. Uh, hmm. Well, we do have Alfie's dad on the other line. We could we could talk to him. Yeah, all right, put him on. Hello, Mark. How are you doing today? Oh, wagwan. Absolutely not. Bye. <laughs>